Welcome to The Breakfast once again on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful morning right here. And uh, as always, we'll look through the pages of the National Dailies. Chris Kane and Wandu was a legal practitioner, a detribalized Nigeria, as Kofi would always address him, is here. <laughs> Kofi also Mercy, is here Mercy, this Mercy, you have to pay for that, uh, <laughs> for that uh, description of Chris Kane and Wandu. Mr. Wandu, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Is, is, is taking your copyright to tap in? <laughs> yeah, so she has to pay royalty. <laughs> Good morning. Yeah. Good, good to have you. Chris, let's take a look at the punch now. The punch seems very interesting. It talks about 2023 presidency. Tunubu or B unfold economic restructuring agenda to not. APC Labour candidates speak on restructuring corruption, agriculture, power. I supported Atiku. It pays it's payback time now. Let him endorse me. Ex uh, Lagos governor. <laughs> it's a lot that's unfolding. We're not even talking about the flooding situation. Atiku Saraki party members fume as thugs attack PDP Kaduna Zamfara rallies. And there's a writer underneath the bold caption Inflation hits 20.77% as food supply effects crisis worsen. Feels like we're getting close to the end. Nigeria's debt risky, unstable, or unsustainable. Nigeria's debt risky and unsustainable. That's what uh, the report is saying. And Edwin Clark asks Buhari to release Namdi Kanu, Knox, the Attorney General of the Federation, Malami. And just before we move away from the punch, another talks about ministerial retreat. Buhari backs Nigeria Air, or Siba Ajo, uh, laments forex woes. Please arrest Lagos businessman over wife's debt. I mean, if you have been on uh, the social media space, I'm sure you're uh, aware of the IVD and uh, Bimbo saga uh, that has led to her death, according to the report. But we're hoping that, you know, the police would uh, step into all of this and justice will be meted. Tuition hike, protesting Ogun police students disrupt exams and de demand reversal. Kogi gunmen kill worshippers during church service. So much going on in the country. And another talks about 31 policemen dismissed for misconduct in 18 months. That's the much we can take this morning on the punch. All right, let's go straight to this day. Uh, I'm sorry, the nation, I think we'll go to the nation uh, first or next, rather. Um, with the following headlines on the nation newspaper. Um, we would like to apologize what you've seen before. Uh, I think the punch is a bit different from what you talked about, Mercy. Mm -hmm. It happens sometimes. Um, in the nation newspaper, my plans uh, for prosperous United Nigeria by Bola Metin. Uh, Kaduna State is the brine right now. Everybody throwing in Kaduna State. And uh, they've been having speeches at that Adewa um, forum you know, event hosting the major candidates. Um, so my plans for prosperity, uh, United Nigeria by Tinubu, ruling party's standard bearer unfolds blueprint for out of school children, which is a big problem up north. Why North should vote APC candidate by Aerofi? Yeah, Aerofi has also been spitting fire as well, um, as far as uh, Peter Obi is concerned. Very interesting series of events in Kaduna there. Uh, 2023, INEC chair not under pressure to quit. BVAS uh, to be deployed. Wiki PDP should apologize for Atiku comment. Uh, Wiki PDP should apologize for Atiku comment. Uh, I will unlock Nigeria's greatness, says Obi. Uh, $5.8 billion Mambila Pa. ICC declines to stop firm's case. My administration scorecard by Buhari and NLNGs, a force majeure may push up gas prices. Some of the headlines on front page of a nation. Away from the nation, we have the leadership. And on the leadership, almost similar with the punch 2023 presidency, Atiku Tinubu Obi begin real battle for nothing votes. Uh, that's how the leadership captions it. APC labor flag bearers lay agenda before Arewa committee. I will ensure indivisible Nigeria. That's what uh, Bola Ahmed is quoted to say. 
And Obi promises to unlock Niger's greatness, uh, stem corruption. Atiku pledges to reposition restructuring sector and tackle terrorism. And MPP intervenes in Southwest crisis. It's a lot, but the question Nigerians should not fail to ask, and we will not stop asking, is how. Uh, this are uh, the bold caption on the, you know, leadership this morning. We have met the yearnings of Nigerians in seven years. <laughs> That's what President Muhammad Buhari is quoted to say and the leadership. Three of your farmers pay 100 million ransom to regain freedom. Bajabia Miller made foreign airlines of a trapped funds. I thought we moved past this. And amid 20.77% inflation, Vice President seeks synergy between fiscal monetary policy. NGE, IPI, others condemn shutdown of broadcast stations in Zamfara. PDP crisis, WK faults BOT's resolution on IU. And two killed, others injured as gunmen attack Kugi Church. Very, very saddening. I mean, that's it on the leadership newspaper this morning. And finally, on The Guardian, we have the following uh, lead st uh, top stories. Um, inflation speaks mildly as flood, uh, peaks mildly as flood sounds a uh, food crisis alarm bell. Inflation peaks mildly as flood sounds food crisis alarm bell. And um, we can see, talking about flood, the nation seems to be, The Guardian, sorry, seems to be the only paper we have this morning that uh, is putting the flood situation around the country front and center. And I think kudos uh, should go to them. Tinubu Atiko B test strengths in Kaduna. Yes, indeed. It's been a time to sell themselves in the northern part of the country. Fresh oil spill occurs in Bodo community. Really sad right there in River State. Kogi, gunmen invade church, kill three, injure others. Uh, shutdown of uh, four broadcast stations in Zamfara threat. To democracy, says Guild of Editors. Huriwa alleges complicity in oil theft as FCT club urges compact solution. LP wants Ialoja general prosecuted for allegedly forcing traders to back Tinubu. And uh, a sad one here, five die, three injured in Kogi auto crash. Uh, some headlines uh, on the front page of the Guardian. We bring Chris Kende Wando at this point. Uh, uh, Mr. Wando, um, let's start off with looking at the... Uh, unfolding situation in in uh, Kaduna State with uh, the major candidates, the three major candidates for now, uh, by public perception, um, you know, trying to sell themselves to northern Nigeria. Controversial statements and, and actions have been recorded. Uh, first, let's start off with um, uh, Atiko Buwakar, who said, um, you know what, uh, that uh, uh, the northern candidate should vote not for an Igbo candidate or Yoruba candidate, but for a pan-Nigerian candidate. I think that Atiku is being, you know, grossly being misrepresented and being misunderstood. If we take the statement in context, you know, of whether he should, he said that uh, North Nation should not vote for Igbo or Yoruba. Um, that's number one. Number two, Ebola Mitinuma has also been selling himself. Some said he wasn't strong enough to stand to answer questions at Arewa House, at uh, Namdi, uh, sorry, at uh, the, uh, the uh, Amanda Bello University. Um, and then he made some controversial statements, since, including saying that Atiku should step down for him. And it was payback time, as he had helped Atiku in the past with his political platform. Then thirdly, uh, Peter Obi um, could not stay out of the headlines for the wrong reasons, according to some, with his visit to Shegumi uh, and his supporters online, especially having to swallow their words and eat their humble pie, because they uh, had criticized Shatima, criticized uh, Atiku for taking a picture. With Shegumi. So these three candidates have uh, painted a picture. I want you to give us your thoughts on that. Um, thanks. The, the fact remains that when it comes to politics, the Northern are more politically savvy than the South. And that's a fact, uh, irrespective of whatever anybody say. Uh, the, 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 the politicians, the politics in the North is a more united uh, kind of uh, uh, force uh, compared to what we see in the South, where we are so divided. In the North, irrespective of your political parties, the fact is that when it's time for them to come together to speak with one voice, they will do that. Unlike uh, the South also, that is uh, totally divided between the South, South, South East and uh, South West. None of them trust themselves. Uh, then the fact also remains that 
Kaduna is the political headquarters, quote and unquote, of the North. Over the years, it has always remained so. So it has always been a convergence of uh, political activities in the North, right from independence in 1960. So when you see the politicians going to Kaduna, it is not just for the fun of it. That is where they converge to take decisions and also uh, align themselves politically. Don't forget, in the 70s and 80s, we used to have what, what was called the Kaduna Mafia uh, within the military those days. Uh, so Kaduna is out. So anybody going to Kaduna, you know that it's very there to make a point. That is one. Two is the fact that they not already set an agenda for 2023, asking the presidential candidate to come and tell them what they have for the region in 2023. The South have not gotten their ass together. And I don't know whether they will still come together as a unit to also ask these candidates to come and tell them what they have for the South. I, I don't know what they, how they're going to do it. But now talking about what the candidates say, um, you you rightly mentioned what uh, I think you said. You said you are saying that uh, the, his statement was taken out of context. I don't think it was. It's just a gas on his part. Um, he calls himself a unifier. And the unifier that is burning that uh, gate bridge. Now he's using his mouth to burn the, the, the bridges. All those, what he said was unnecessary, irrespective of the contest. Don't vote for Yoruba man. Don't vote for Igbo man. That already, you're already um, splitting certain people as coming from one particular point. And that in itself does not speak well of you. So that is the, that is that. Um, then the issue um, as regards the, the statement uh, by uh, the, the, the Tinubu asking Atiku to uh, <laughs> support him. Well, he's expected in politics, but don't forget that you see saw them in pictures yesterday uh, where they met at the airport and they were uh, express, uh, you see them with their panthers and the rest of them. They are very, very good friends. Now, the issue that bothers me is the level of insecurity that is about uh, of, um, coming up, especially within the north. It started from Zampara State, where the governor of Zampara State tried to stop media houses from doing their job by shutting down the various media houses there for trying to, uh, for going to cover um, the, the, the rally of an opposition party, PDP. Before that, the Zampara State governor had also issued a statement that no political rally must will be held in Zampara State. That is the tendency of it, uh, 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 an authoritarian. What it means is that this man is a danger to democracy in Nigeria and he must be stopped immediately or else we are going to have serious issues moving forward. How can you shut down media houses just because they went to cover a, a, a political rallies of a political party? Not only the state uh, media, even NTA that he has no power over. That is authoritarianism. That shows the level of insecurity when it comes to political, uh, 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 how will I put it now, political tolerance. And um, if this man is not stopped, there is a possibility that he's going to truncate this democracy. And I like the way the media and everybody is fighting him. The uh, NBC have issued statement, AG have issued statement, uh, AUG have issued statement, even the Benton Broadcasters Association of Nigeria have also issued statement. This man must be stopped. Then, where we move also, we go to Kaduna, back to Kaduna, and, saw, and we saw the attack on PDP members that were attending the presidential campaign rally in Kaduna yesterday. That also is, is, is totally condemnable because it is a breach uh, of the peace accord that was signed by the political parties in Abuja just a few days ago. That is a breach, and the federal government and the security agencies must make sure that this stops. You ask of P2B, well, nothing to talk about P2B. You have said, said it all. He met Gumi. These were some of his supporters. We are, uh, we are already castigating the other presidential candidate that met, uh, that met um, Gumi. But now P2B has gone to meet him. But he's still, I know he's still, if you see, see the statement he issued, uh, Gumi issued yesterday, he said he was just asking him some fundamental questions. How are you going to do this? How are you going to do that? The rest of them. I personally don't see any problem with him visiting um, uh, Gumi. Other presidential candidates have done that. And if they had believed that it's good for him to, then there's no problem. I don't have any problem. But the only problem I have also, the statement 
uh, created to be governor of Kaduna State, where he said he would that unlike what happened when he went to Anambra during one of the elections, that he could have stopped Obi from um, from coming to Kaduna. That statement is also is not is very well becoming a governor of that status. That is that for that. Okay. Um, Chris, let's take a look at the leadership now. Uh, yesterday, President Mohamed Buhari declared, you know, opened the last ministerial performance retreat. So there was really like that retreat uh, where you talked about the review. And that's where he made the statement that he's met the needs or the yearnings of the people in seven years. And uh, in that uh, you know, retreat, he talked about uh, high impact projects that have been implemented across the country, meeting the needs and aspiration of Nigerians. And it's a nine priority agenda of his administration. The president highlighted uh, remarkable progress made in the areas of agriculture, economy, infrastructure, security, health, anti-corruption, among others. I'd like you, you know, to look at this and share your thoughts. What do you think? Do you think that you know, the nine-point priority that the president had mentioned, you think he's met the yearnings of the people in seven years plus? It is not for the president to mark his script. Nigerians will mark his script after his tenure in 2023. So he shouldn't be in a hurry to mark his script. You cannot, you cannot set a question for yourself and still mark the script and score yourself. It's not possible. But back to your question as to the nine-point agenda he said, uh, uh, that he said in 2015. For me, I don't know anyone that he has met. The area of security, he has not, and there is no more secure than it was in 2015. In terms of um, uh, corruption, we have seen what is going on, even within the oil sector, where we are losing practically about 400,000 um, uh, uh, barrels of uh, crude every day. We have seen situations where uh, those in government and uh, appointees have stolen billions and billions of uh, naira belonging to Nigeria. For example, is the AGF, uh, the Auditor General, and so many other graphs that is going on. The level of corruption within this system will not be, we will not know much about it until this government exists. In the economy, how much was the dollar when it took over in 2015? Now, the dollar, as of yesterday or thereabout, is uh, between 730 or 740. And inherited the UK. <laughs> so well, I don't know in which area he has said, yes, there have been some dips here and there in the area of infrastructure. When you talk, you know, the first thing the world is that second Niger bridge. I said that second Niger bridge is going to bring to the table, table of Nigerians. It is what you're there supposed to do. As a government, that's what you're supposed to do. The education sector is totally, totally collapsed. We've seen as we've been on strike for over eight months, they just resumed after the court gave that order. And you let then look at the uh, life of Nigerians. You will see the rate at which Nigerians do Japan now. <laughs> Mercy, you know what I'm talking about. Nigerians are Japan at the rate that we can't even <laughs> we are laughing. At the rate at which we are Japan now. If you go to the airport and go to the way and see the rate rate at which Nigeria, that is because the because of the economy economy of Nigeria. This was what we saw in the eighties when the Ghanaians came to Nigeria because of the situation, very serious economic situation. Nigerians are now ready to even jump out to Togo and Benin instead of remaining in Nigeria. I'm not even talking of those going to UK, US address. That even UK recently issued a statement that. They are going to look, they want to take they want to take a second look at Nigerians coming into UK because of the number of people they bring along with them. Are you talking of employment? What is the level of employment? Are you talking of student children out of school? It has reached about the last we got was about 80 million. Are we talking so in what area will this government say that we have uh, achieved it has fully achieved? So uh, as I said, the president has the right to mark his script, but he cannot mark his script. We will do that. So he shouldn't be in a hurry. In 2023, by the time he leaves in May, in May 29, 2022, we'll sit down and mark his script and compare him with all those before him. Then he will get his score. And Nigeria will hold, it, will hold on that history as to what he was able to perform based on the promises he made to Nigerians. Electricity, we are not there. He's talking about um, petroleum, refineries that was going to be refinery. He has not been a single one since he came into office. So what are we even talking about? 
All right, Chris, uh, let's, let's go back to The Guardian. Um, and uh, the paper focuses uh, on the flood situation connecting with, with, it, with the economic uh, uh, situation in the country. And the picture there uh, displays people of Okutukutu. Uh, being ferried to their destination in Yenogoa yesterday, it seems the entire Bayelsa state is under flood. Uh, as we speak, you know, people raising questions as to the trillions of, of Naira being, you know, received by the state from in terms of federal allocation uh, since the days of Alamesia, Silva, um, uh, Diri, Jonathan, and the state does not have the requisite infrastructure. Uh, so I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, give us your thoughts on the flood situation um, in the country as we speak. And of course, uh, the nexus between this flood and the economic uh, uh, fortunes of Nigerians. Yes, uh, one of the papers were reporting this morning uh, about floating corpses across those areas. That you just be seeing corpses now floating everywhere. Uh, that is how bad the situation is in most of these states. Uh, the light report we got uh, as journalists that 33 out of the 36 states of the population have uh, been affected by this flood, and mostly those within the Niger, River Niger Bank. Uh, Kogi, Nasarawa, Anambra, and so many other states in that region have been fully affected. Anyways, yes, as well. Um, and just as I already said, this is going on, this is happening. Yes, we believe, we know that there is a problem of climate change has been experienced in so many, most part of the world, including Florida and the US, uh, in Pakistan, uh, Bangladesh, and the rest of them. But the situation is the fact that in as much as we have a problem of climate change here in Nigeria, we also have the challenge of not doing what we're supposed to do. Because if we have done what we ought to do, maybe it should have been reduced. Time with that number, Cameroon has told us that they are going to release their dam, the water in their dam. And they've asked Nigeria to be able to handle their own side of this thing by building channels through which this water can be channeled out and so that it can flow. Nigeria never did that for years. Cameroon wants to release this water, the whole of most part of Nigeria will be flooded. And we have people in government. So, uh, it's, a, it's a misfortune for two. Several, every year, you find it difficult, but when it gets to this period, you find it difficult to ferry yourself between um, Abuja to Lokoja to other parts of the country because Lokoja and Kuchi State will be totally flooded. Uh, you are also talking about Bayesa. Most part of Bayesa have been flooded, even to the legislative quarters. The governor came out a few days ago to say that even his own house is affected. Then you can ask yourself, what do this state, what the federal government do with the ecological funds that it releases every time? And the state will also be asked, what have they done with the money being given to them through the ecological funds? So it's a mirage of problems that we can, we, we could have ameliorated most of this problem if we have done what we ought to do, but we've not been doing that. The economic part of it is that come 2023, we're going to have serious food shortage. Now, uh, the government have just released, I think, 12,000 tons of grain, federal government, just three days ago, to be able to I mean, raise some of this problem. That's, but that is not going to be enough. A particular company lost a, a rice farm of over $100 million. That is just one, one company. You cannot imagine what has happened in so many other parts, which are within the food basket area of Benue and Gombe and the rest of them. The prices of goods are rising. The bag of rice is moving to about 40 to 45,000 Naira. Now, you can now imagine what will happen next. Ferrying of petrol products, which is why we are having serious uh, uh, fuel queue in uh, Abuja, which I asked up until this season up now. Because most of those tankers cannot pass through, that, uh, through the, uh, um, the local general. Those of them will uh, try to try to mop up Mobile road is not good. So those are the issues. But I say, as I, as I repeat, until we do what we ought to do, we'll continue to be faced with this problem. And my heart well, goes out to communities of those that um, lost their lives. And about 2 million Nigerians have been displaced by this flood already. No, quick, quickly, I mean, it's very interesting to always note that uh, uh, always we would want to begin to say, hey, for instance, I mean, on the tweet of Okonjo Weller, on her Twitter handle, she talked about uh, she expressed concern about, you know, the situation of the flooding. And she also made reference to climate change and the need for adaptation. But however, 
we understand exactly what we're dealing with. And I don't know if it's always fair that we would say. It's not like we're not in denial of climate change. We already know that because Nymet had talked about the rain, which will be unusual, and that's because of climate change. But this is not the case. And so it's always saddening or, you know, quite worrisome when we always have to make reference to uh, the fact that, oh, it's a global situation. And so we're experiencing it. Is the case in Nigeria a global? I mean, it's, is it a really a natural disaster or is it man-made? However, we need to move away from that crease. Uh, there's another one that's quite interesting, and it talks about the president, you know, throwing his support and talking about the Nigerian air that will probably take off before the end of this year. I mean, this is 2022. That's uh, in the retreat. And the vice president is complaining about uh, Forex. Uh, Nigeria Air, uh, um, this is how many, this is almost the third or fourth attempt we are trying to get this right. That's on the punch, by the, the way. Jam yes. Don't, don't forget the jamboree that they had in using close to how many millions of naira to just launch a dog in London a few years ago. Um, and after that, uh, nothing happened. Um, I know that there was an attempt to have a Nigerian carrier in collaboration with Virgin Atlantic uh, some years back, and uh, Richard Branson was ready to make that possible. A Nigerian businessman later bought up uh, that, uh, the airline, and uh, he was given some funds, and that was it, and it, that disappeared. Now, uh, we are, uh, Ethiopia Airline is coming in, and the Ethiopia Airline is having, I think, about either 49%, I think about 49% of Nigeria, uh, the so called Nigeria Air, and um, then other, the other equities would be in the hands of Nigerians. But the fact remains that how viable will this be, I don't know. Um, I totally feel that there is need for us to have a national airline if not for anything, but for the pride it brings. Probably Nigeria is the only country in the world that doesn't have a national airline unlike other. But the fact is that, let it not be the same thing that we have been saying. We are government is going to be poor. Now, it seems that government is not going to be poor. The Tempura airline is the best airline in the world, in, in Africa, present. And I believe that we should be, if they be good, allowed to uh, run it the way they want, then they, they, they've been doing theirs, then we'll be it will be it will be successful, but the Nigerian factor I can assure you will always come to play. But that is talking of pouring the uh, uh, running Nigerian air. Uh, our own domestic airlines are also having serious issues surviving. So um, you can see the cost of um, uh, aviation uh, fuel rising as much as about 900, uh, 900 uh, to. Uh, a liter of a major well, that in itself is killing the industry. Most airlines are already shutting down in Nigeria, and the, it, it, it's not going to abate. We continue to do what we're supposed not to do. As of if so, and the seventies, we have Nigeria had the best national airline in the whole of Africa. The best Nigeria Airways was the best compared to in fact, Nigeria went as far as helping other countries in Africa to set up their own airlines. But see where we are presently. So. If for pride we said that we're going to have a national, oh well and good, but I hope we'll be able to stick to the agreement we're going to sign with this country because in the past we have done signed those agreements and we reneged on it and I hope it will end up becoming a problem in the future. So we are talking about the dollar. You know what it is. Some people promised us that it's going to be one dollar to one naira, uh, although they denied it after. Now a dollar is about 730 to uh, a naira to, to one dollar. And we cannot be able to, except we do what we need to do. Why? We are not exporting as much as we, we export as much as we to, to end for an exchange. Two, our crude, we are not exporting as much. Even the quota allocated to us by OPEC, we cannot meet. We are losing about four hundred thousand um, dollars barrels of crude every day. You know what that is. Other areas where we can be able to even chop up a uh, foreign exchange, area of agriculture, we are supposed to be exporting certain things. In the, in the mineral industry, IT industry, we are not doing that. We are borrowing to service our debt. So those are the issues. That those are the problem. Uh, 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 those are the problems. So no matter whatever, and the economic team of Nigeria seems don't they don't seem to know what to do. The, uh, the, the, the governor of Central Bank will tell you today that it's Aboki FS that is problem. Aboki FS they, they shut it down. It's continuing to rise. From there is IBDCs. 
he, then we are having issues. We, people have said that with that number is that we have to collapse the two exchanges, the parallel market and the official market. That except we're able to do that, we we'll continue to because what they do, what happens is that these same agencies of government send these dollars to certain individuals, especially from certain part of the country, and make so much money from it. And that is what happened. You go to the banks, you cannot even get it. Use your card now to try to make a transaction of one hundred dollars. You cannot be able to do that. That is the financial problem we have. Uh, to okay. Find ourselves. That yeah. Is just what we find ourselves. Yeah, Chris Kendi, we have, we have to move. Uh, interesting analysis from you, uh, and we will wait to see how this this pans out. But I mean, you've painted the picture, although it doesn't seem uh, as a um, an encouraging prospect for the next couple of years. Um, you talked about the Nigerian factor. Let's hope that things will change for the better as soon as possible. I want to thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you very much for having me. I do have a nice day. Thank you, Chris. And uh, uh, we have, uh, of course, a look at what happened at Transpire today in history today being the 18th of October 2022. We'll be right back and uh, we'll dive into our first major conversation. Stay with us. <laughs>